My name is Tanya Kabbalah and this video interview is being done for the White Lake Public Advisory Council. The PAC, as we call the Public Advisory Council, was established in 1992. It's a group of local citizens working with local, state, and federal government to clean up White Lake, uh, one of 43 Great Lakes areas of concern um, designated in 1985 for historical pollution and environmental problems. The PAC works closely with the Muskegon Conservation District, who provides us um, with technical and administrative assistance. In the mid-1990s, the PAC and, and the state identified eight out of 14 problems that um, could be present in and around White Lake, and these are called beneficial use impairments, things like restrictions, restrictions on dredging activities, restrictions on fish and wildlife consumption, impaired drinking water, eutrophication, or kind of excess weeds, uh, aesthetics and loss of fish and wildlife habitat and loss of fish and wildlife population. There's been a lot of work aimed at resolving these problems for, for actually several decades and a lot of progress is being made. It is anticipated that these problems will be resolved um, and White Lake will be taken off the list or delisted as a Great Lakes area of concern in 2014. So this interview is being done to explain what that means for White Lake kind of the upcoming delisting of White Lake. And we have um, John Riley from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, right here. We have Ken Mahoney, who is the Vice Chair of the PAC. He's also Chairman of the Muskegon County Commission. And they are going to ask some questions relating to um, delisting of White Lake. And so we're going to start with John. And first question is, if he could explain <coughs> what he does with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and how that relates to the White Lake Area of Concern and the White Lake Public Advisory Council. Okay, and so I work for the Office of the Great Lakes within the Department of Environmental Quality. My job is uh, coordinator, Area of Concern coordinator, and White Lake is one of my primary responsibilities. Essentially, what I do is try to coordinate resources from the federal, state, and local levels to try to achieve restoration of some of those problems or beneficial use impairments that you had mentioned. Back in the late 80s, uh, the department wrote the very first remedial action plan and that sort of formed the basis or, or, or established a baseline, I guess, of, of conditions in White Lake uh, from which we've been trying to um, recover or, or clean up or achieve some, some level of restoration. And I just want to point out that the uh, Area of Concern program was established through international agreement between the United States and Canada through amendments to the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. Uh, those amendments took place and became effective in 1987. And those were, uh, or that agreement is the one that, that laid out what those 14 potential beneficial use impairments were. And John attends, um, when he can, he attends our public advisory council meetings and public <clears throat> meetings, and he's our main point of contact at the state level for um, dealing with, you know, White Lakes pollution problems related to the Area of Concern program. Yeah, that's right. And, and I want to point out, too, that uh, the Area of Concern program is a non-regulatory program. We don't have any legal authorities to force anybody to do anything, but uh, we do work with the various divisions within the DEQ and even the DNR and, and various federal agencies as well. And so ours is a very collaborative type of a program. Do you want to explain any further how you work with members of the Public Advisory Council? Well, um, you know, like I mentioned, it's, it's a collaborative program. We work hand in hand since we don't have regulatory authority, there's no le legal leverage to force things to happen. Um, relationship building is very important, so we try to maintain a, a close relationship. Uh, one of the things that the state is able to do is to pass through funding to support the activities of the Public Advisory Council, and we really think that the, the activities of the local community are very important in terms of advocacy and outreach and education. and. Uh, keeping these issues in the public eye and keeping folks locally informed of what's going on here. Okay, Ken, um, a question for you. Can you talk about what the, the Public Advisory Council's, what, what the group's role has been in relation to kind of determining what 
White Lakes problems are and and kind of addressing those problems as well, as it relates to you know eventual removing removing White Lake from the list. Right. Uh, there have been a lot of studies in terms of determining what the impairments were and how do you relate and how do you determine when they have been removed from the list. Uh, I think there's a suggestion about the fish consumption study which we studied not only White Lake but we studied Pentwater which doesn't have the industrial heritage and at that point with the scientific data then you can determine when the fish consumption BUI or the impairment was removed. Um, we have removed four of the eight currently and we're moving forward on the others. Okay. But it's very scientific. It's not, oh, I think it's a good idea, but it's, you have to have some data to back it up. So it's a scientific, uh, has scientific data um, to, that supports the goal that we're aiming toward and, and the methodology. Right. Okay. Don, can you tell us, I mean, um, the state of Michigan has 14 areas of concern. White Lake mm -hmm. and Muskegon Lake, mm -hmm. uh, too, are are among uh, are on that list. And um, just just so so we're clear, um, what does delisting of White Lake or the other areas of concern? What does that mean from a, a state Department of Environmental Quality perspective? So what that means is, you know, like you mentioned back in the 80s this list of areas of concern was established. And so what that meant was there was a, a, a fairly severe degree of environmental degradation in these, in these locations. And that was then defined by these various problems or, or beneficial use impairments. And so then once we are able to, you know, institute some restoration activities and clean up contaminated sediments, for example, and then verify through scientific study that those conditions no longer exist, we remove those impairments one by one or restore those beneficial uses. And by the time we get to the last one and, and are able to restore that final beneficial use, what that means is not that White Lake will be restored to pristine pre-settlement conditions. It's more that uh, White Lake, is, you know, there's always going to be environmental concerns and issues, sedimentation, nutrients, and those types of things, and 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 that will require ongoing vigilance and and, and some work. But what delisting really will mean is that White Lake will be in a condition that's similar to other inland lakes in the region, essentially. Okay. So so um, so from an environmental ecological perspective, it will be. Um, its status will be um, maybe similar to other lakes that haven't had the industrial heritage, or, or those that have. More or less. That's okay. exactly right. Like I said, there, there's always going to be some issues, and some are going to be localized, and some are going to be, you know, larger scope. But um, but but really, it's 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 a, really in a similar condition, and doesn't rise to that level of severe environmental degradation that it had in the past. Okay. Um, can can you talk about what the Public Advisory Council is doing um, now related to delisting. With knowing that um, that's likely to happen in 2014, what, um, what, what's going on right now? Well, we are reviewing the studies and the information that we have as related to the four remaining impairments in cooperation and working with the DEQ um, to determine whether or not we have reached our goals. Again, all of that scientific stuff, the data has to be there to justify removing it. It's not a question of, like I said before, it's not a question of just looking and saying, well, there's some grass over there, so we're all set. Um, that's not the case. We need some specific information to justify removing those impairments. Well, if I might jump in here, uh, I think it's important to point out that several years ago, the state developed a set of very specific criteria, criteria right. right? So we were able to come up with uh, the endpoints. How do we know when clean is clean enough, essentially, so that we can declare those beneficial uses restored? Right, and that's, very, that's why the data is necessary to right. go with those uh, state 
to verify that we've uh, actually reached those endpoints. And and in addition to the, you know the pack was very active in developing some local criteria to 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 address some the very specific concerns that that were here, and we made sure that those criteria were consistent with each other. In addition, I think the PAC has made a very good effort in terms of telling the community what's going on, how we are making progress, and you know, so they're able to see as well. And, and too, a lot more is planned this year and next just to make sure people understand the, the, you know, the goals that have been met and um, why we are um, heading towards delisting. Um, John, do you want to explain the role, you know, as we move forward into kind of this formal delisting process, mm -hmm. probably, you know, mm -hmm. near the end of this year, right. what, what role will um, the, DE, the Department of Environmental Quality play? Well, what, it's a, what will you be doing? Yeah, so, you know, one of my roles along the way is to uh, maintain documentation of the progress that's been made, and in some cases that's you know, keeping the records of these studies that have been done and verifying that we've reached these endpoints, and sometimes those are numerical goals. And, uh, and so my role really is going to be uh, assembling the documentation to make the case that these beneficial uses indeed have been restored and to kind of lay out the case and, and essentially provide kind of a history of the whole process from start to finish, and then to demonstrate that yes, we have achieved all these all these restoration targets, and so now you know we've gotten to the point where White Lake is really no significantly different than than other areas in the region, and so part of that's going to be then shepherding that documentation. There's going to be back and forth. That's going to be a collaborative effort with the PAC. We'll be looking for the PAC's input. Um, on those documents and also working with the Environmental Protection Agency and eventually that goes to the International Joint Commission. And, and locally too, the Public Advisory Council, you know, every, you know, step along the way we're going to be going out to the public and make mm -hmm. sure they're aware of what happened right. to what is happening. Um, can, what, um, can you explain what delisting means, you know, from a local perspective? You know, once, once we're off the list, what does that mean about the health of White Lake? It means it's better than it has been, but again, you know, that's a long-term process. It doesn't mean, as John has said in the past, that you're going to be pre-settlement days, that it's, you know, whatever issues they had at that time. But we have moved forward from being the degraded situation it was. We have tried to restore as best as possible, and it will be a continuing process. Even if you're delisted, there will be issues you have to deal with some that we know about now, some that we probably don't know about yet. Well, and issues that any, any lake, any lake has have, to deal right. with, not the severe issues that we, we dealt no, with. You know, the weed growth and all of those things that occur, you know, whether it's a industrialized lake or whether it's a regular lake, uh, we will have to deal with those as they come along. And um, Ken, one, one additional question. Um, what do you think might be needed once um, White Lake is off the list and, and, and how, how might people in the community address that? Well, I think you need to understand just being off the list doesn't mean you're automatically wonderful. You need to monitor what progress you've made, make sure it doesn't slide back mm -hmm. through inattention because it's no longer an area of concern, but you still have to keep track of what was done you need to look at the restoration projects to make sure that they're actually doing what they should be doing. And all of that requires data and studies, but mostly I think you have to keep an eye on the lake. It's the gem of this area and you have to make sure that you know we keep it better than it has been in the past. And, and probably continued public education too. Right. You know, if, if you have the public concerned about it and pointing out things that are done or not done and need to be done, that's important. And if you have the public education out there as to what it should be doing. Well, and um, another one for Ken. Um, um, can you explain a little bit how some of the existing groups, local groups, may, may um, help with some of the issues that need to be addressed once we're delisted? 
I think, well, there's a lot of groups that do like fish monitoring, they do bird monitoring, they do all of that kind of data collection that would be of great help, especially the, the watershed groups, uh, the EQ's data collection, uh, just the White Lake Association, the boating people that notice things are on the lake all the time. They know they can monitor for us and bring those pieces of information to us that uh, if something needs addressing, we can do it because we have these other groups that have the education that will bring information to us. Well, and we also have the White River, uh, White River Watershed right. Partnership and, um, um, of course, the Muskegon Conservation District will continue to play a key, key role, role right. in um, the health of White Lake and the watershed. And um, a, a final question for John, I think. Um, just if you could explain um, how are you or other de Department of Environmental Quality Fishers, um, officials, I mean, you're, you're obviously not going to just drop us off your list and not pay attention at all, but um, how, how are environmental concerns in the White Lake area are going to be addressed after delisting at the state level? Well, the department has a variety of different programs that address all kinds of concerns. You know, there's the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, NPDES, discharge permits. You know, that program's still going to remain in place. There's soil erosion, sedimentation, control laws. You know, all the environmental laws, both federal, state, and even local, right. that are on the books still apply, mm -hmm. right? And so the, all the agencies remain a resource for the needs of the community as, as far as that stuff goes. Uh, like you said, you know, the department does water quality monitoring around the state. You know, this is, this is part of that territory. I mean, none of that stuff changes, and so we'll still be available. But I also want to point out, too, that, that uh, the community still has a responsibility to, you know, provide some outreach, education, uh, provide stewardship of the resource that's in your backyard right here, too, and to make sure that, that to be vigilant, essentially, that things don't go backwards and we don't end up with some of the problems that we've had in the past. Yeah. And if I can jump in, I, I think it's what I was trying to say before, that continuing monitoring, whether it's by the DEQ or local groups that are doing all of their, and just ordinary citizens that notice things, to bring forward and be very vigilant so we don't go back into a situation where it's not good. And one of the great benefits of this program has been that we've established these relationships between local community members, the county, the conservation district, the state, and how many different divisions within the DEQ and DNR and EPA. And so those relationships aren't going to just disappear. We still know each other. And so if there's issues, we will continue to communicate about those things. Do, um, Ken, do you have anything further to add? I think that's about it at this point. And John, same question. Well, I think it's just an exciting time. You know, there's, a, there's been a lot of work a, from a lot of different people over a number of years here. And it's really just an exciting time that now we can show the impacts of the work that's been done and, and the progress that's been made and, and that we've reached those those goals that we've set out to and it's it's kind of hard to believe and and so everybody kind of deserves a pat on the back for all that. Well, well it is very exciting and I appreciate your helping us understand um, what's going to be coming up and I want to thank you. You're welcome. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Right here, we have Ken Mahoney, who is the vice chair of the PAC. He's also chairman of the Muskegon County Commission, and they are going to ask some questions relating to um, delisting of White Lake. And so we're going to start with John. And first question is if he could explain <coughs> what he does with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and how that relates to the White Lake Area of Concern and the White Lake Public Advisory Council. Okay. And so I work he provides us um, with technical and administrative assistance. In the mid 1990s, the PAC and, and the state identified eight out of 14 problems that um, 
could be present in and around White Lake, and these are called beneficial use impairments. Things like restrictions, restrictions on dredging activities, restrictions on fish and wildlife consumption, impaired drinking water, eutrophication, or kind of excess weeds, uh, aesthetics, and loss of fish and wildlife habitat, and loss of fish and wildlife population. My name is Tanya Kabala, and this video interview is being done for the White Lake Public Advisory Council. The PAC, as we call the Public Advisory Council, was established in 1992. It's a group of local citizens working with local, state, and federal government to clean up White Lake, one of 43 Great Lakes areas of concern um, designated in 1985 for historical pollution and environmental problems. The PAC works closely with the Muskegon Conservation District. There's been a lot of work aimed at resolving these problems for for actually several decades and a lot of progress is being made. It is anticipated that these problems will be resolved um, and White Lake will be taken off the list or delisted as a Great Lakes area of concern in 2014. So this interview is being done to explain what that means for White Lake and of the upcoming delisting of White Lake. And we have um, John Riley from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Work for the Office of the Great Lakes within the Department of Environmental Quality. My job is uh, coordinator, area of concern coordinator, and White Lake is one of my primary responsibilities. Essentially, what I do is try to coordinate resources from the federal, state, and local levels to try to achieve restoration of some of those problems or beneficial use impairments that you had mentioned. Back in the late 80s, uh, the department wrote the very first remedial act